Before the pandemic, most of us had individuals that we talked to on a regular day-to-day -day basis. Friends, family, teachers, and even if you don't want to admit it, pets. We had interactions that we depended upon, quite frankly, to stay sane. In fact, we leaned on and relied on the support system that we had put into place, day in and day out. Yet, as soon as we were told to stay an arm's distance away, everything vanished. An arm's distance away quickly became light years away. The people that you had interacted with every single day seemingly became unapproachable. Conversations that once rolled off your tongue were hindered, as if you had lost the ability to speak. The support system that we had felt safe in was just a false sense of security. For most of us, no one was there. And that's my concern. Too often in our lives, we surround ourselves with the support system that doesn't quite do what we intend for it to do when we need it the most. We surround ourselves with a passive support system. One that's reactive, not proactive. It's time that we took a look and understood the pitfalls of how we construct our support systems and worked towards setting up a better, more active support system for ourselves. One that's there for us every day and when we need it the most. When thinking about surrounding yourself with a support system, it seems obvious and redundant for me to state that it does have tangible benefits, but it's worth saying the degree to which they help us. Dr. Uchino, chair of the Department of Psychology at the University of Utah, goes over exactly this in his book, Social Support and Physical Health, Understanding the Health Consequences of Relationships. He examines the effect of social relationships on physical health and assesses the research that shows not only that supportive relationships protect us from a multitude of health problems, but also that the absence of supportive relationships increases the risk of dying from various illnesses, including cardiovascular disease and cancer. And this is just one of the many studies. The importance of support systems is something that shouldn't be overlooked to begin with. And now that we've understood that they are indeed a necessity in our lives, we can shift towards understanding how exactly we form them. So, how do we set up these support systems? Well, the American Bar Association of Lawyers and Law Students has cleanly laid out that there are three core groups that make up a support system. Family, friends, and professional colleagues. And these combined provide one of four types of social support. Emotional support is the entire realm of compassion and care, which are typically found within the sphere of your close friends and family. Instrumental support, we can think of tangible acts of service or help, provided which also usually come from our close friends and family. These two types of support are more along the lines of the personal ones that we tend to care about the most. The informational support is advice and mentorship, which can come from any of the three core groups, but more specifically, the professional colleagues when dealing with career and development. And the last, but arguably the most important, is appraisal. We could characterize this as motivation towards getting better in the form of a gentle assessment of how you're doing in life, good or bad. These tend to come from your friends and family when dealing with personal development and your professional relationships when dealing with career development. However, the distinction that I want to make here is that all of us tend to have these in our lives. As I was going through the various forms, most of you were filling out a mental checklist and thinking, oh, okay, I have that one and that one too. Yet, I urge you to look deeper. How many of those relationships within your support systems are really providing you with the support that you need, especially 
during these tough times. And that brings me to the crux of the issue and the heart of my concern. We are surrounding ourselves with support systems that are wholly, or in most aspects, passive and not necessarily helping us along our path to success. That could mean only trying to benefit off your relationship when you succeed or not readily being available when you need their help. Researchers at the James Cook University in Singapore found that passive support given to participants led to a decrease in determinedness and pleasantness after a stressful task in comparison to the active support. And I know that you're probably thinking, it's obvious. Of course active and positive support is going to make me more determined to face challenges and help me be a better person. If it's so obvious, then why do most of us still have a passive support system? Right? If we know that those that support us actively help us progress in life, why might the majority of those in that mental checklist you made earlier help you passively? We have trouble letting go. At one point in time, sure, they may have been part of an active support system. But the most important part to understand is that this concept is a living thing. Your support system doesn't have to be and isn't meant to be stagnant and rigid with the same people over and over again. Rather, you can stay more in touch with the individuals that you feel encourage you to be your best self and adjust accordingly. It's a hard concept to implement, and I've had my fair share of struggles. The pandemic has created distance, and that distance has led to a lot of our support systems being more passive. I graduated high school during the pandemic, and a majority of my friends that I used to talk to every day slowly grew apart from me. And this is nothing new. It's known that your high school friends grow apart as you go to college. However, I felt that we needed each other during these tough times, since it was much harder to physically create a strong active support system in this new, unknown, online environment. And I realized that there was still some hope in rekindling those connections. I began to reach out to those that had been with me and supported me throughout my high school journey. And we shared updates on how college is going, study tips that we picked up throughout online learning, and stories about some of the amazing new people we've met so far. Instead of letting my entire support system crumble due to distance, I made sure that I acknowledged those that had helped along my journey and offered my help through these difficult times. And through these difficult times, I've learned that it's up to us to preserve and better our support systems. Today, we've gone through how a support system can help us, what it's composed of, and the difference in an active and passive one. We even questioned our own current systems along the way and understood that it's up to us to recognize and better them. So go out into the world and look for meaningful connections, ones that add to your active support system. Be there for others just as they would for you.